Hello friends, welcome back to another episode here on the channel. I hope you're all doing great and for anyone new to the channel, my name is Lee, also known as Osiris. In today's episode, we are finally kicking off in the official rule set series 10 on the vgc ranked ladder we're back on the switch finally we've been doing a lot of content on showdown thank you so much to everyone's support over the last few weeks when we've been doing that but we are finally back on the switch on our home console and we are ready to go and today we're going to be featuring any veltal team uh, that i really do like i think it's very good in the format at the minute obviously you've got to watch out for things like xerneas that are picking up and doing very well in the format obviously the big kind of threat for Evelto but other than that Evelto has a decent ish matchup in this uh, in this meta game it uh, does well against things like Rillaboom like Urshifu forms can do work against a majority of things and obviously with that flying type attack that it does have an oblivion wing helps it get back uh, HP and obviously the dark aura boosted dark type attacks really does some work especially against things like Shadow Rider Calyrex uh, the rest of the team we've got a trick room mod in there with a stack attacker and a Moongus uh, uh, pairs up really nicely with Eveltal and kind of counterplays things like Xerneas pretty well. Uh, we've got the Landorus Therian uh, with Intimidate, double Intimidate with the uh, Incineroar. So got to be careful around things like competitive Melotic that have been popping up in usage recently, but with double Grass in the team, should be able to manage that all right. Uh, the Scarf does allow us a little bit of room against things like Nihiligo in particular, um, just to allow us to hit it for, for good damage uh, more than anything. And obviously against Reggie Alecki as well which uh, otherwise could cause us a few issues but again we do have Amoongus and uh, with the Rocky Helmet it is pretty nice as an option to switch in on things like Urshifu if we are in a tight spot to take those multi-target attacks so as always we'll have a few games with the team now there is a poker paste down in the description below and we'll throw the rental code up at the end of the episode if you did miss it already I have put a uh, video up on the channel with a bunch of rental codes that uh, help anyone coming into series 10 kind of get started and test out some kind of common archetypes that are being used at the minute so do check that out and before i forget we are running another series 10 weekly tournament this friday which will be the 6th of august and it'll be running from 8 p.m uh utc plus one uh until 11 p.m on friday evening so if you want to get involved in that we'll be posting the results from last week uh very soon we had over 200 participants in last week's one which is our biggest one yet which is pretty phenomenal uh we also have a form as well to fill in so it helps us just capture the team information so we can post the graphics and have that running kind of trend of results as we go through each week so if you want to um get involved with this all the information will be down in the description description with the code as it is on the screen here fortunately this week i am actually visiting friends so i won't be around to play which is a little bit unfortunate um but i will be playing the following week so if you do take part have a great time and this all this information will be on our community section of the channel as well hopefully you enjoyed today's episode as always but without further ado we'll jump straight onto the ladder and get into our first game okay first up today we have a volcarona rillaboom umbrian zashian reggie alecki and tapu finney so things not looking so great for Ivaltal straight away you've got the reggie alecki which threatens us pretty hard you've got the tapu finney that threatens us with things like moonblast uh, and then you've got the zashian which does outspeed us of course and um we don't really have a way to deal with it super effectively um we do have ways to kind of mitigate the zashian and the Reggie Alecki, I think things like Lander is going to be a big kind of player here for us, of course. Uh, but it's whether or not we want to lead Landorus first or if we want to kind of bring Landorus in as a secondary kind of tool because you've obviously got to worry about the the Umbrian as well with that potential yawn that could be a little bit awkward to deal with. Um, I think Evelto does really well in this match against like the Rillaboom, the Volcarona. Uh, to a certain extent the Umbrian but we've got to be careful that we're boosting the Umbrian's kind of foul play as well with our Dark Aura so we've got to be mindful of that whenever it's out on the field I do want to bring Evelto I think uh, Incineroar I think we bring Landorus um, and do we bring our own Rillaboom or do we bring Amoongus here because Amoongus could be good but I think I think really like Rillaboom's probably the better option just because we can change the, the Misty terrain um, and we can also threaten the Tapu Fini a bit more immediately than what Amoongus can. Like Amoongus is like great at, at disruption um, with its redirection, its spores, but we're not really going to be able to utilize the spore if this, the Misty turns on the field, if you get my drift. Um, so I think Rillaboom, for that immediate kind of pressure that it can put on, is probably a little bit 
better suited, um, in all honesty. So, we are going to see the Volcarona and the Zashin come out for my opponent. Now we've got a pretty nice switch here from Ivaltal into Landorus if we want. And then we've got Scarfed Landorus that we could put pressure on the next turn and go for maybe a Rock Slide. Uh, get around the redirection. Um, and get a double Intimidate onto the Zashin, which is always good. Um, now what do I want to stop? Do I... I think the thing is as well, what we could potentially do is just fake out the Zashin and go for uh, an Oblivion Wing. Like, that can that can totally work as well. We can shut down the Zashi in this first turn. It does switch out, so we'll get some damage onto the board. I mean, if it's Rillaboom, that's great, but it is going to be the Umbrian. And any damage onto Umbrian is always useful, you know? Um, so we get the Fake Out into the Protect, which makes a lot of sense, and we get an Oblivion Wing off. So pretty straightforward play, and my opponent doing nice work to get the, the Umbrian onto the field, because that will start to... Causes issues with yawn and things like that, which aren't ideal, uh, to say the least. So, I think what we'll do, we'll go for Flare Blitz into the Zashin, and I'm going to bring in Landorus here to get that double Intimidate before they're able to set up maybe a substitute, which they could potentially go for here. They could go for a Sacred Sword as well. Got to remember that our Incineroar hasn't been intimidated, so our Flare Blitz is going to be doing a heck of a lot of damage. And also by getting the Yveltal off the field, it does kind of help us out a little bit with kind of downpowering the um, the foul play that could potentially come out from this Umbrian as well this turn. Although, we got Incineroar out, so we're not really too threatened by it. Um, the Misty Terrain coming out onto the field, though. I can see a Yawn coming into um, into our Landra slot, potentially. Or maybe a Snarl. Mm, it would have been better going for really. Yeah, Snarl coming out. Incineroar does avoid. That's kind of all right. We've got the U-turn we can go for into the Umbra in the next turn. Um, Flare Blitz not ideal. But we got the parting shot into that 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 space the next turn. Um, okay, leftovers. And the U-turn will do a good chunk of damage to the Umbra, and it is super effective. So at least we've got that there. Uh, I think parting shot. And then go for a U-turn as well. We are pulling a double switch, so we've got to be a little bit careful with where the Velto kind of comes onto the field. I don't think we want it like, well, is Moonblast going to come out into... The Landorus slot? I don't know. I don't know, honestly. I think we'll bring Rillaboom onto the field now. I know we're going to get rid of the Misty Terrain, but at the same time, with Misty Terrain being on the field, are they likely to go for Yawn? I mean, if they're likely to go for Yawn into anything, it's going to be into the Rillaboom slot, which was the Veltal, which kind of wasn't touching the terrain, so it is more affected. But Muddy Water coming out, Incineroar actually avoiding, so... Ninja-like skills there, helping us out a bit as Rillaboom just kind of soaks that up pretty well. Um, and foul play coming out as well into Rillaboom. Oof, oof, oof. Not ideal. Not ideal. Um, <laughs> but at least we can pressure the, the Finny this next turn, you know? And I think we just bring Landorus back onto the field. Because... Between Landorus and Rillaboom, we can we can get rid of the uh, the Umbrian here, and I think the Tapu Fini is pretty pressured to either protect or switch out this next turn. Whereas we could potentially just fake out U-turn onto the onto the Umbrian. The problem is, like, do we see the Volcarona come back onto the field? Because that is an option. The Volcarona could come on, uh, like could come in on the uh, the Tapu Fini slot and I'd be kind of more tempted to hmm no I think what we'll do is we'll U-turn and Grassy Glide into there I'm kind of tempted to Rock Slide as well because I just feel like the, the Volcarona just comes onto the field now Okay, well, we're not going to see that. Uh, hopefully this combination is enough. Um, Grassy Glide going to do a nice chunk of damage. is not going to be enough. And a foul player going to be able to take down the Rillaboom, which puts us in a in a very awkward spot, I will say. Mm. 
We can't bring Yveltal onto the field. No chance. Because... Um, hmm. That will boost the far play. And that will take us down. And we're going to... Yeah. We really kind of let it slip here with this far play. And take down that. Oh, the Moonlight. Okay. I think they had an opportunity there to get rid of Rillaboom. For sure. Uh, okay. Well... We'll take that, take that all day, all day long. Um, Tapu Fini's got to switch out this next turn. Got to switch out this next turn. Problem is with the Umbrian, it's putting on so much pressure with this foul play every turn. Now do we take the opportunity to just go fake out Grassy Glide into it. And then we can Grassy Glide again the next turn. But we got Knock Off onto it and then Grassy Glide. I think we just grassy glide, grassy glide. Just get these glides off. And the Finny switching out. Volcarona coming in. Coming in. Yeah. Oh, it's in a focus. It's in a focus. I keep forgetting this about Umbrian. Oh my god, what am I doing? We would have been better off just flare blitz in that slot. It's not in a focus. So we didn't get caught out. Okay. Now, um, <laughs> all right. That is interesting to say the least. But we we are in a little awkward spot where my my opponent is putting on pressure with the the quiver dance here. Um, I'm confident that a flare blitz will pick up the Umbrian, right? And I think we bring in Eveltal. Quiver Dance could be pretty tricky for us to deal with as well. If it is that variant. We could see Rage Powder. But we need to keep Rillaboom like for later on in this match. We cannot allow it to go down. Especially with the Finny in the back. Okay. Umbrian coming out. And Zashin coming in. If we get a Flare Blitz here that's huge. But we may see a Rage Powder. We may do. I don't know. Heat wave. Wow. Okay. Well, we're going to get a flare blitz off into this Zashin, which is massive for us. Massive. Cojones. Yeah. And that pretty much decommissions the Zashin, in all honesty, because now we can switch Incineroar out to Landorus, and we can Oblivion Wing into the Volcarona. And get that Intimidate, which is the big important thing for us here. Um, and with them having Tapu Fini in the back, if they change the terrain, at least that Earthquake's like powered up then. And then between Yveltal and Landorus, we might be able to just close this one out. Especially if we can get rid of the Volcarona now, you know. That's gone first again. So that is max, max speed. Close combat coming out. Let me take it. Oh, with one HP. Are you mad? I can't believe we just took that. Can't believe it. That's so huge for us. That is so huge. The the imaginary sash. The problem is now. Oh, well, well, we know. We just sucker punch the... We sucker punch the, the Volcarona and we Earthquake. Because Is the Grassy Train ending now? No. Got another round of healing no it does disappear so we got the earthquake full power now so yeah we just suck a punch even if we get burnt it doesn't matter too much we just earthquake and suck a punch and the sucker punch will take down the volcarona checks the scarfed um heat wave so it means that landers will be able to get this earthquake off even though the flame body does activate of course it activates um the amount of times i've played volcarona i'm not complaining i am a little bit complaining you know, the amount of times I play Volcaron and get hit with a full contact move and it never activates. But the one time we hit it, the first time we're on the switch, it happens, it happens. It's going to happen. But it's good. You see what the uh, the ability can do here. So, um, hmm, hmm. still got to think about that Umbrian, which is obnoxious to deal with in every kind of setting. Uh, and we do have a free Earthquake here. So we could potentially... Um, well, Oblivion Wing and Earthquake will be enough to get the to get the Umbrian 100%. So we can remove that, and then Rillaboom just wins this first. So it's, it's pretty straightforward from from here on out. 
a blaming wing earthquake will be enough even an earthquake might be enough to get the the umbrian potentially i don't know though i would be very hesitant to uh to put money on that yeah umbrian just too strong too strong crit on the finny which will make that a lot easier but it's not the one that we're really worried about um and we'll probably see muddy water i'd imagine here from the tapu finny which will take down landers give us the room to get rid of boom in and that will close the game up for us so it's a tight game and i think it's like you know okay moonblast well we're gonna get the we're gonna get the uh the old earthquake off again which should be enough with with the oblivion wing um and that will lock lock it up for us so a nice way for us to kick off today pretty tight game uh i think there was definitely opportunities where we could have lost that i think the turn where the umbrian had the opportunity to not moon moonlight which it made it trickier at the time but i think if you remove the rillaboom there and then although it came down to it we didn't necessarily need it i think it would have made it hard okay next up we have brando and they are playing a team of kanto raichu galarian moltres comfy urshifu kyoga and tornadoes so we got a tornado a torn ogre team uh, a little bit different from your kind of standard team you've got options in here with the comfy which supports uh the glaring Moltres super well with things like the draining case to activate um the weakness policy and obviously floral healing which really supports the entire entire team uh and trick room as well as in an additional speed control mode along with the tailwind that we're going to see on the tornadoes which is so commonly played with the kyoga and then potentially and i would put money on it nuzzle on raichu which can be the other option uh which makes it a little bit difficult to kind of function around so a Veltal here is a, like a bit of a double-edged sword like it can do a lot of work against this team um but the problem is uh, at the same time we're kind of boosting the dark type attacks on that galarian moltres which makes it a little bit more tricky of course uh amunga is going to be good here got to watch out for the tornadoes primarily over everything else and and also the the moltres which can cause us a few issues um okay let's go eveltal let's go eveltal and do we want incineroar or rillaboom i think we'll go now we'll go incineroar rillaboom and then we'll go amoongus in the back and lock in bringing two grass types against two flying types but we'll be all right i think i think the assault vest gives eveltal a little bit of an edge but <sighs> against kyogre sometimes but you know i think when you pair it up with with the double grass it obviously helps out a bunch but um we're leaving ourselves a little bit short with answers for the moltres and you kind of look at this team and think wow do we go with stack attacker but it's hard to bring the stack attacker against like the kyoga especially when um they've got faster fake out and ride you so they lead Kyoga Raichu they haven't in this scenario but then that would be a bad situation for us because you couldn't redirect away um the fake out or the the double target attack you know but in this scenario we do have uh, an option where we can fake out the tornado so at least stop the, the tailwind for one turn and potentially go for a snarl here or we can fake out the Kyoga which is more than like more likely to protect here i think um do we just snarl i think we snarl and fake out do we fake out the ogre yeah fake out the ogre because like really yeah it does protect but we're kind of covering bases here and protecting incineral rather than just allowing it if if we get caught out and it doesn't protect um they're going to get the tailwind up a turn sooner than what we would have done anyway so it kind of works out for us a little bit we get the snarl off to tornadoes and we do weaken that tornadoes which is which is really really helpful like um it's just where where do we see the hurricane come in especially with what we've got in the back it's not not super ideal um i think we can snarl again And is it better to get rid of Amoongus? Oh, like Amoongus coming in, we'll be able to take attacks better than Rillaboom because we're we're bulkier on the special defensive side. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. We're gonna see Water Spout for sure. 
Icy Wind and Water Spout. Okay. Icy Wind not doing too much. Water Spout, full power. We could have went for a Sucker Punch here as well. That was the other option. But I think the Snarl is going to benefit us a little bit more in the long run. Yep. Okay, well, we take that pretty well. Pretty well. And there comes the Snarl. So, the Tornado is in range now of a Sucker Punch. Um, same, the thing is, I'm not really too worried about the Kyogre. I'm not massively worried about the Kyogre, if I'm completely honest. We could spoil the Kyogre here and just go for a Sucker Punch. The problem is if we see a Taunt here, but we don't. We see the... They're going for the Hurricane. Now, if they taunted there, that would have been really bad because we just we just get wiped out by a Water Spout, which will take Yvelta down here, I'm pretty sure. Ooh, we actually survive it, which is amazing. Okay. So, Yvelta going to be able to survive for another turn, at least... And we get that spore off into the Kyogre. Now, what comes in? Is it going to be Moltres? Because if Moltres is on this team, you've got to imagine it does have... Oh, it's comfy. Huh. Okay. That's that's super, 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 super fine. Um, That's super fine, because now we get the switch into the Rillaboom. They're going to go Drain and Kiss. Um, do we use this momentum to kind of just get some regenerate health back or do we just actually put the comfy to sleep I think we put the comfy to sleep and then Rillaboom can make easy work of that Kyogre the following turn and whatever comes in gonna take a big grassy terrain boosted grassy glide anyway and like Amoongus here is not really in any danger of getting knocked out draining case coming out does some decent -ish damage Kyogre definitely taking that turn of sleep. So the guaranteed turn and we get the Spore off into the Comfy. So uh, the next turn I think is where we definitely go for Grassy Glide into Kyogre and we get... Uh, do we bring Eveltal back on the field or do we bring Incineroar? I just want to get the Regenerator activated on the Amoongus. It's probably safer to bring Incineroar in. Um, we'll go Grassy Glide. Not the Eveltal. And we'll bring Incineroar in. Because then we've got an active fake out. And we're not really pressured at this point in time by the Kyogre. Like, not one little bit. Because the Grassy Glide should take Kyogre down with the Miracle Seed that we've got. Um, and the, the Comfy has to have a guaranteed turn of sleep. So we, that's why we could have potentially brought the Veltal in. But again, it doesn't put us in a great position the next turn. Because if the Comfy has a one turn wake up. Where's the Evaltal then? It just goes down to a draining case where it could potentially come in at the end of the game. Like, and our goal now is to try and get rid of that Comfy because once the Comfy's gone, the Evaltal comes in and has a little bit more freedom where it's not threatened so much by that, that priority draining case that we can't get around with, you know, fake out and things like that. Moltres. Okay, well. Uh, oh, not ideal, not ideal, not ideal. But... Uh, we can Grassy Glide into the Comfy. And we can fake out... Fake out the Moltres. And Incineroar is not bad in this situation because we do have Snarl that we can weaken the Moltres with. And you've got to hope that two Grassy Glides is going to be enough to get the Comfy, right? Got to hope. Got to hope. Yeah, it's going to be more than enough. Uh, well, okay, critical hit. We get very fortunate there. Very fortunate. Um... Hmm. But the rain has stopped. So one of the options we do have now is just going Flare Blitz into the Comfy, protecting Rillaboom. Because really what we want to try and do is get Eveltal onto the field. Uh, so we can Oblivion Wing the Moltres. Um, hmm. Yeah, let's go Protect. Let's go Flare Blitz into Comfy. Because I think you chase down the Rillaboom if you are Moltres here. Like 100%. Comfy stays asleep. So that helps us out a bunch. Fiery Wrath. Okay. Well. Yeah, I was scared that we we're going to get the flinch there. It's just not ideal. Not ideal. Now it gives Comfy the option to kind of wake up. And get that recovery with the leftovers, which isn't great. 
Um, we got to go for the grassy glide and just double up here. I mean, the the, the thing is, like, Rillaboom's not good against Moltres anyway. Comfy does get the draining kiss, but the double up will be enough. Ah, okay, there we go. There's the uh, there's the old um, weakness policy. Not ideal. Just gonna make it tricky. Gonna make it tricky, of course. Grassy Glide is gonna be enough. Nope. I'm gonna have to rely on. Okay. As long as you don't flinch here, then we're all right. As long as we don't flinch. No flinch. That's good. And we'll get rid of this comfy. Yeah. Okay. Well. Now. We probably want to switch. I think we switch Rillaboom out to Amoongus. Sack Amoongus at this point. At least the one thing that Rillaboom's got kind of going for it is that it has got Fake Out, which could allow then Eveltal to come in and just the room to get that Oblivion Wing off uh, to get that health back and just get damage onto the board, you know? So what we'll do, switch Rilla out into Amoongus and then we'll go Fake Out. Uh, no, 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 no. Snarl, Snarl, what am I talking about? What am I talking about going for Fake Out with Incineroar? It's been out on the field for about 10 turns. There's no way we're getting uh, Fake Out. Imagine that. Every 10 turns, Fake Out regenerates. That could be some That could be some funsies there. Moongus taking that pretty well. And we can kind of punish as well. If they're unable to take down the Moongus the next turn, we could go for a spawn. So it kind of forces them to, to, to ensure that they do take it out. Get that Berserk activated, so putting it back to plus two. Um, we'll go for the spawn. We'll just go for another snarl. We could parting shot here as well, but oh, Mungus not taking that super well. Hmm. Okay. Well, and you know, Rillaboom going to be able to come in now. I think Rillaboom comes onto the field now, and we fake out Flare Blitz, and then maybe a Grassy Glide will be enough after that. If they don't have protect, of course, they could protect at this t at this stage. They could protect, and then if not, that is game. Wait. So we'll fake out, and we'll go for that flare blitz, and that should be enough. But I won't be surprised if we do see protect here. No protect, fake out. Um, it's one of the drawbacks, you know. Like if you've got fake out, I, I protect here. I think you have to go for it, um, but. It's such, like, Fake Out's such a predominant, like, tool within in the format, you know, at the minute. It's it's so imperative to kind of use that. But very good game to brand. A really nice team. Really nice take on um, the Torn Ogre. A little bit different from what you see, and you do love to see it. So uh, we'll jump across now and remind you all of the rental code for today's team. Okay, friends, here is today's rental code. I hope you've enjoyed today's episode, showing a little bit of Eveltal and uh, the rest of the team. If you do try it out, please let me know down in the comment section how you get on with the team and what your thoughts are on Eveltal or what your kind of build is on Eveltal if you've already been playing around with it. Very interested to see how these kind of Eveltal teams are shaping up in this format. I think there are definitely a lot of different possibilities with what you could use pairing up with Eveltal. You're going to need a steel type, but there are many steel types in this format. And some of them that have haven't really been looked at too much yet you know there are things like Reggie Reggie Steele for instance that's done so well in Players Cup 4 could that have a resurgence in Series 10 it could do uh, there's also options like Metagross as well that can perform pretty well uh, in the format although things like Shadow Rider Calyrex do make it a little bit more tricky but when you pair it up with Eveltal the synergy there is quite nice between the two of course so there are options let me know like I said down in the comment section below if you do try the team out though have a lot of fun with it and uh, we'll wrap things up then we'll be back very soon with another episode on the channel probably playing I don't know yet we'll keep it a surprise for next episode so if you've got any suggestions though do drop them down below and let me know we've had a lot so far but I'm going to leave it there friends have a great rest of your day whatever you're up to and I'll catch you all for another episode very soon so until then take care and bye bye